As you move from some of your topics and your information into a larger narrative, it can help to have an understanding of what your basic thematic structure is. As we know, all stories have some sort of structure. They may be linear, they may be nonlinear, uh, they may be parallel, they may have multiple stories going at one time or jumping around back and forth in time and space. Whatever they do, there's some sort of underlying logic to it and it can and help you to think about what your big idea is. Uh, by getting at what the deeper structure of the themes are. One note about themes and topics, they're not the same thing. Uh, a theme is always an action statement. It always contains a verb. So you want to make sure that you're actually saying something specific with an active verb uh, as opposed to just a general topic. One of the most common is a focal thematic structure where you have various themes that overlap and come together with your big idea being here in the center. Uh, this is often a very common a thematic structure for exhibits, for instance, where you move around through various thematic sections, which coalesce in a larger uh, idea or, or big idea. So one thing you might want to think about is, you know, what are your different them themes and how do they relate to one another? It may be that they're all sort of overlapping and different pieces of a, of a larger idea. There's also hierarchical thematic structures. This is one thing that we're very used to seeing traditionally in websites, for instance, that there's a general theme and then we have sub themes and sub subsections. Um, also sometimes used uh, to create a thematic structure for exhibits where you have your big idea, then you have specific themes within that, and then specific items or specific sub stories or little examples that show those specific sub themes. This assumes, of course, that there's one overarching idea uh, and themes that are the most important as opposed to the focal, where you have a more of a sense that things are kind of overlapping and organic. Another uh, thematic structure you sometimes see in history is a sequential. Uh, this is often used in a chronological structure. So you may have specific themes that you're tracing through time uh, here, so you might have, you know, say different eras of um, a specific theme uh, where you're looking at, say, the history of suffrage, and then you've got like the different eras of the suffrage movement moving through time. This could also be uh, parallel. Sometimes you can have a parallel sequential, <laughs> or sometimes you're just following uh, three themes in relation to one another. Uh, that have different uh, components. Again, a lot of this is just visual ways of realizing uh, your thinking uh, and sometimes just a tool for working it out and seeing which one works the best. Sometimes we see a matrix structure where we have especially looking at specific things over time and in relation to one another. This can get overly complicated and this slide usually makes people's brains explode a little bit. So. If it's too much, don't worry about it, but I offer this as all of these models are coming from the Lloyd Manual of Exhibition uh, Development. Um, and so that's where these are, these are coming from. Here's one that I see a lot in capstone projects. This one and the next slide, contextual. <clears throat> Not so much an onion, which would be sort of taking a general and then going down into levels of specificity. Uh, very much the way you peel away uh, layers of an onion. Um, you could also see uh, a pizza contextual uh, structure, and I hope this isn't making you hungry, uh, where you have different components of a big picture. They may not have a clear relationship to one another, but they're all part of um, a larger um, thematic area. Or if there is a stronger relationship between the different thematic sub-themes, then you might have an environmental structure where you have, again, you see this a lot um, in social and cultural history where you might have a kind of going back in time to a specific moment and then looking at different interrelated aspects of the environment of that moment. So think about which of these uh, is the best for your project. Play around with a few of them that make the most sense to you as you develop your themes. See how they relate to one another. And this will give you a sense also of how to structure the presentation of your project, uh, whatever medium that you're working in, uh, how your narrative is, what your narrative arc is going to be, how the structure of your website might look, 
um, how the ideas relate to one another.